Speedway Motorsports gives us a glimpse of what the future North Wilkesboro Speedway may look like, and does Dale Earnhardt Jr. deserve to be a first ballot Hall of Famer? How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove. I hope you've had a fantastic week. Happy Friday. A very happy Friday indeed. Tonight, NASCAR will induct three new members into the NASCAR Hall of Fame. And if you're a longtime race fan in North Carolina, you gotta be pretty excited about Speedway Motorsports announcement today. North Wilkesboro Speedway is another step closer to getting a serious, serious facelift. We're gonna talk about all of that and more here today. But first, if you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below so you don't miss any upcoming NASCAR content. Got a lot of exciting things planned for 2022 and the season now is right around the corner. The clash is like two weeks away or just over that. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a thing. Now, let's begin by talking about North Wilkesboro Speedway. That's right, the abandoned North Carolina short track that NASCAR effectively bailed on in the mid 90s. Today, Marcus Smith, the CEO of Speedway Motorsports, the parent company that still owns North Wilkesboro Speedway, gave us fans our first look as to what the potentially newly renovated North Wilkesboro Speedway will look like. Take a look at some of these renderings that were revealed today. Ooh, this looks, this looks good. Couple of immediate observations. This reminds me a lot of the renderings we saw for Nashville Fairgrounds months ago. And you'll notice that Perkins Eastman Company, that's the same company that's managing both projects apparently. Of course, Nashville Fairgrounds, that's a Speedway Motorsports project as well. So it makes sense that there'd be some similarities, but like between the old school Coca-Cola sign there on the front stretch and the similar throwback modern design, there are some serious similarities between the two. Secondly, you'll notice this is an asphalt track still. I know there's a lot of speculation or at least theories out there that maybe SMI would turn North Wilkesboro into a dirt track. Maybe it'd be more versatile in that respect, but no, these renderings show it as an asphalt, as a paved track. And also while I zoomed in and looked at some of the finer details, I noticed this a little Smokey's Garage cameo, a Cars 3 reference. Well, I guess it's a reference of a reference, because in the movie Cars 3, you know, the Pixar movie, like Lightning McQueen visits an old abandoned racetrack that was based on North Wilkesboro Speedway. So North Wilkesboro, in these renderings at least, paying homage to Pixar's homage. It's a weird circle here, but that I just thought that was funny. I hope that makes it into the final design if this gets made. Anyway, Marcus Smith, the CEO of Speedway Motorsports, released a couple of statements today. Among the highlights, he said, in the car world, I would call it a resto mod. It's going to look old, but it's going to work new. When you think about nostalgic opportunities, this is one of those once in a million opportunities. Our hope is to celebrate the history and look forward to the future. North Wilkesboro Speedway is an amazing historic place for NASCAR. It's almost like Fenway Park is to baseball. I think with this money from the state and the American Rescue Plan, we can make some dreams of reality at North Wilkesboro Speedway. He mentions money, yes, at the end of 2021, North Wilkesboro Speedway was awarded $18 million from the North Carolina state budget, money that will go towards rebuilding the track's infrastructure, among other things potentially. Remember, Charlotte Motor Speedway got some money and actually Rockingham got a little bit of money as well. Real money's involved now, which means this is the best situation North Wilkesboro Speedway's been in in years, in my lifetime. But just how realistic is the prospect of NASCAR returning to North Wilkesboro. Well, Marcus Smith said that he fully expects the truck series to return to the track, saying we specifically, and I'll thank Marcus Limonis, the CEO of Camping World for his voice of support, we specifically think it's a real possibility to bring back NASCAR and the Camping World truck series to North Wilkesboro Speedway. Remember like a year or so ago, Marcus Limonis publicly promised to pledge a million dollars towards the Speedway if it gets renovated. So Marcus Smith already teasing the idea of the truck series, at the very least racing at North Wilkesboro in the not so distant future, but you gotta imagine their aspirations won't stop there. If they're gonna pour all this money, and yes, a lot of it is coming from the state, but if they're gonna pour all this money into this speedway, they're gonna have bigger ideas than just the truck series. No disrespect to the truck series, but they're gonna want Xfinity, and one day, I think they'll want Cup Series action there. How realistic is that? I don't know. The capacity certainly will be much less than that of most other NASCAR Cup Series tracks. That's always something NASCAR, and when they're making up the schedule, they take that into consideration. And, you know, there always are concerns about what kind of market will there be for racing at North Wilkesboro? Like, obviously, it's right there in North Carolina. That is the number one state for NASCAR. There are a lot of fans in North Carolina, but there's also a lot of competition. 
I mean, North Wilkesboro Speedway is only 90 minutes north of Charlotte, which is another SMI-owned facility. It's only two hours east of Bristol, another SMI-owned track, another SMI-owned short track. It's three hours or so from like Darlington, four hours or so from Richmond. It's only like two hours away from Rockingham, which I mentioned they're getting some money. There's maybe the chance it comes back one day. The point is, well, North Wilkesboro is in North Carolina, a lot of racing fans there. There are also a lot of popular racetracks that will be competing with it, so to speak. By keeping the capacity lower, more limited. I think that will make any race at North Wilkesboro a, a hotter ticket, but we'll see if the NASCAR Cup Series ever returns to that speedway. I'm still a little skeptical. I think Truck Series and maybe even the Xfinity Series is absolutely within reason at this point. At this rate, I'll almost be surprised if it doesn't happen in the next four or five years. I would fully expect some of the, the second and tertiary series to return, but will we ever see cup cars back at North Wilkesboro. I hope we do. I want to see more short tracks on the schedule, especially a newly renovated one. If the renderings come to fruition, I mean, that looks really, really cool. I agree with Marcus Smith's comparison to Fenway Park. That's certainly the vibe I'm getting. Old school baseball stadium. I said the same thing about, about Nashville Fairgrounds. I'm a sucker for that kind of nostalgia. So I hope it comes to fruition. I hope we get this renovation complete. I hope SMI is able to move all the parts and pieces into place, and hopefully we get major NASCAR series racing back at North Wilkesboro in the next few years. I think it's certainly possible. More a matter of when, not necessarily if, at least when it comes to the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series. Now that's gonna do it from North Wilkesboro Speedway. Tonight, NASCAR is inducting three new members into the NASCAR Hall of Fame in Charlotte, North Carolina. Mike Stefanik, legendary modified racer, Red Farmer, member of the Alabama gang who still races from time to time, at least as recently as a year or two ago, and Dale Earnhardt Jr., 15-time consecutive NASCAR Most Popular Driver Award winner. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is a NASCAR Hall of Famer. Not just that, he's a first ballot Hall of Famer. Now, this vote took place back in 2020. Everything was delayed a year because of the pandemic, but Dale Earnhardt Jr., in his first year of eligibility, even with the slightly more restrictive procedure, you know, they only inducted three this year, two from the modern era, which Dale Jr. would be a part of, still, Dale Earnhardt Jr., made it into the Hall of Fame on his first try. And a lot of people, a lot of fans are debating whether or not he deserved this honor. Whether Dale Jr. makes it into the Hall of Fame or not, I think is less controversial. The controversy, if any, comes from him getting in his first year of eligibility. I've seen a lot of folks tackle this subject this week. I wanna do the same here today. Does Dale Earnhardt Jr. deserve to be a first ballot NASCAR Hall of Famer? I'll begin with this. Being a nice guy or being well-liked isn't enough to get you into the Hall of Fame, at least in my opinion, but it is called the Hall of Fame, meaning that fame should be a factor when deciding who gets in and who doesn't. But more important than fame itself is how famous people choose to use their fame to change the world around them. That's where influence comes in. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is widely regarded as a nice guy. He's obviously extremely famous, but beyond that, he has been the most influential person in the world of stock car racing for at least the last 20 years. There are tons of examples of celebrities or famous athletes who crumbled underneath the spotlight. Not everyone is capable of managing the immense amount of pressure that comes with being a celebrity, not wanting to disappoint anyone. When it comes to the past 25 years or so in NASCAR, no driver has felt the weight of the world on their shoulders the way Dale Earnhardt Jr. has. Yet more times than not, Dale Earnhardt Jr. handled that pressure with, with grace. To me, that's extremely noteworthy and highly commendable. Now, that's just part of Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s entire body of work. Obviously, you have to look at his on-track stats. This is a sport, this is a competition. Stats and success in your profession matter. 26-time winner in the NASCAR Cup Series, tied for 32nd all-time, two-time Daytona 500 champion in the Xfinity Series. He won two championships as a driver back-to-back -back in the late 90s. As a team owner, of course, he began Junior Motorsports with his sister Kelly back in 2007. They've won three championships with Chase Elliott, William Byron, Tyler Reddick. He's helped launch the careers of other successful drivers like Brad Keselowski, Eric Almarola. And then, of course, there's the most popular driver stat. During his driving career, he won 50 15 straight most popular driver awards. The stats by themselves, I think would warrant a place in the Hall of Fame, maybe not first ballot, but eventually. But combine those stats with his grace under pressure, and I haven't even gotten to my third point yet, his influence on the sport. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is easily a first ballot Hall of Famer. Let's talk about influence for a moment, because a lot of this goes beyond his racing career, his driving career. I, I just mentioned his 
time as a team owner. He's helped launch the careers of successful drivers. He's won championships with stars of the sport today. But also, across just about every form of media, Dale Earnhardt Jr. has had a huge role. From film and TV, obviously, he's had cameos in movies on TV. He works with NBC. He's a major part of the broadcast for the second half of the season. Lost Speedway is his show he did for, for Peacock, NBC's streaming service. To podcasting and more digital media, where, of course, he hosts the Dale Jr. Download, super successful, super popular podcast. He runs Dirty Mo Media, a huge media network. To even the world of video games, if you will, iRacing. I mean, Dale Earnhardt Jr. has long been a proponent of sim racing. Heck, he was one of the guys out there cleaning up North Wilkesboro a couple years ago so iRacing could scan it and put it into their service. I could go on and on, but if you want a recent example of just the kind of influence Dale Earnhardt Jr. has, got the NASCAR Hall of Fame to overturn a longtime policy about who gets to speak at the Hall of Fame ceremony to now allow Mike Stefanik's widow to speak in tonight's event. Influence, on-track stats, all with the weight of the world crushing down on him for most of his career. You combine all of those factors, Dale Earnhardt Jr. is unquestionably a deserving first first ballot Hall of Fame driver. Now, going back to his on-track career, did he fully live up to expectations? Probably not. I mean, he was the son of Dale Earnhardt, NASCAR legend, a Mount Rushmore figure, seven-time champion. I don't think anyone ever expected Dale Earnhardt Jr. to match those numbers, but the fact that he never won a Cup Series championship, sure, that drags some things down a bit. The fact that he drove for Hendrick Motorsports for many years when Hendrick Motorsports was one of the top teams in the garage and often seemed to underachieve, sure, that's a slight blemish on his record, but he won 26 races, two Daytona 500s. He's had such a big role in other drivers' racing careers. To me, he's still very deserving. And let's go back to 2020. Let's look at the other drivers who are on the modern era ballot. You know, his competition. Neil Bonnet, legendary driver, but he won 18 races in his career. Jeff Burton won 21 races in his cup career, and he raced a little longer than Dale Jr. did. Carl Edwards won 28 races and fewer starts than Dale Jr., but he's been completely disconnected from the world of NASCAR since he retired in 2016. Handsome Harry Gant won 18 races. I think there's a case to be made for him, but not over Dale Jr. Harry Hyde, championship winning crew chief. I think there's a case to be made there, but it's arguable. Larry Phillips, five-time weekly series champion. Okay, Ricky Rudd won 23 races, but in like 900 starts. He was the Iron Man. No Daytona 500 there either. I could go on and on. There are some arguments to be made, but there's no one on the ballot who was on the ballot in 2020 who I think clearly has a better resume than Dale Earnhardt Jr. So you got to keep that in mind as well. Dale Earnhardt Jr. without question is worthy of making it into the Hall of Fame in his first go. That's just my two cents. Leave a comment down below. Do you think Dale Earnhardt Jr. is worthy of being a first ballot Hall of Famer? Do you think he should have had to wait a few more years? Share your thoughts down in the comment section below. That's going to do it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching, y'all. Be sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel. We talk NASCAR nearly every single day here on Out of the Groove. And as always, a big thank you to my amazing Patreon supporters. Truly appreciate your support. Hopefully 2022 has some big things in store for us. Hope you have a fantastic weekend. I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.